As a land combat weapon, tanks are structurally incapable of flying in the sky like airplanes. However, if you think that all tanks cannot fly, then you are completely mistaken. Throughout the hundred-year history of tanks, there have always been some eye-catching designs. The existence of a flying tank is a reality, and that tank is the Valentine Experimental Tank from World War II in Britain. In reality, giving a heavy tank the ability to fly is not a wise move, and most of the time it seems unnecessary. So why did Britain develop this kind of tank? Don't forget that it was during World War II, with many defensive lines and minefields. Britain developed this tank in order to allow tanks to pass through minefields more easily. The experimental tank is based on the chassis of the Valentine Infantry Tank, with the original turret structure removed. Its flying power comes from the rocket engines on both sides of the vehicle. There are a total of 26 rockets, 13 on each side, divided into four groups. The number of rockets in each group from the front to the rear of the vehicle is 4, 3, 3, and 3. These rockets are ignited simultaneously, and the power they generate is enough to lift the tank into the air. Of course, the tank chassis itself has been modified to be lighter, with thinner armor protection, and the absence of a turret reduces the overall weight significantly. The designers planned to equip the tank with a Bren light machine gun, an M2 heavy machine gun, or portable anti-tank weapons, such as anti-tank rifles on the production models, so that the flying tank would have at least basic firepower. The tank is operated by a crew of two. However, reality and ideals are always different. The tank encountered some unresolved problems during testing. Under the technological conditions at that time, these rockets could not be precisely controlled. After ignition, they would push the tank off the ground, performing a jumping flight maneuver. This could help the tank cross certain areas, but the driver could not reliably control the tank in the air due to differences in force. The tank would always deviate and eventually fall to the ground upside down. Another problem is that these rockets are disposable, similar to the rocket boosters used for aircraft takeoff at that time. They cannot be controlled like conventional engines, making it difficult for the tank to fly and jump multiple times. This further limits its effectiveness. With the technological conditions at that time, this problem was almost unsolvable, which was the biggest difficulty in the development of flying tanks. In addition to the Valentine flying tank, British designers also conducted similar experiments on the lighter Bren gun carrier and installed deflecting steel plates at the rocket nozzles, causing high temperature gas to burn the track structure. However, the final results were similar. Overall, the flying tank was just a wishful thinking. Tanks themselves are land combat weapons, and if they rely on their own power to fly, it would inevitably limit their armor protection and firepower. Instead of that, it would be better to build a few large gliders and directly airlift conventional tanks to the designated areas, which would at least ensure the tank's combat capabilities. After a series of failed experiments, Britain abandoned this unrealistic tank. During the offensive operations in Europe, Britain used gliders to transport tanks for combat. Although the effectiveness was not ideal, it was much more reliable than flying tanks.